trainer from Simmons and Bristow. If you need a refresher, you might like to watch the earlier video on the different oxygen states in environments, so anaerobic, aerobic and anoxic. I'm now going to show you how these different conditions apply to the different oxidation ponds or lagoons in the treatment system. So usually the raw sewage would come in to the first pond, logically enough. That pond typically will tend to be anaerobic. In other words, the oxygen demand of the sewage coming in very quickly uses up any free or bound oxygen in the system and pretty much the whole of that pond will be anaerobic, no oxygen of any type. That's really common, particularly for, for systems treating trade effluent like abattoirs or chicken processing factories, etc. May even be for some municipal oxidation pond systems. What happens next is that anaerobically treated effluent will flow into a second lagoon. And that lagoon we usually describe as facultative. What does that mean, I hear you ask? Well, we usually have a layer which is anaerobic on the bottom of the pond where all the grobby solids and everything settle out and break down without any oxygen. We have an aerobic layer on the top where all our algae are living and growing and giving us lots of oxygen and the wind's whipping up the water and giving us lots of oxygen. And then we'll have a facultative or anoxic zone in the middle, which will move up and down depending on whether it's daytime or nighttime. And in that zone, the bugs will breathe oxygen if it's there, but if it's not, the clever little devils can swap over and start using bound oxygen, things like nitrates, sulfates, etc., to allow them to do their metabolism. We then may have a few facultative ponds in a row, and finally we usually go into some sort of aerobic pond. Now this pond has a very low organic load, so any oxygen that's there from the wind or from the algae can pretty much penetrate through the whole depth of the pond. You may have a small faculty, wrong colour a small facultative zone near the bottom. You've probably got a very small layer of anaerobic crud on the bottom, but the bulk of that lagoon can be considered aerobic because there's plenty of free oxygen around. Thank you very much.